or, or they just tolerate me because of her or you know if it's a female they just they just tolerate me because of him and you you kind of get these thoughts like you know do these people really like me or or do they just have no choice what have you ever run into those thoughts and and how did you navigate you know maybe relationships that didn't come so naturally with your extended family Give me a short version of that one more time so I can explain yeah, like, it. Yeah, like, I you mean, know, like, like, of course, I'm sure that there's people in Renee's family that you, I'm, I, I try to, let me, I, let, let me say this, let me say this, because I understand what you're saying. It's, it, it's insecurity. And see, this is what happens. See, sometimes, and I want you to understand, our parents didn't always do the whole job. There's an old expression that says it takes a village to raise a child. Right. And a lot of times people say, well, that means your community is supposed to raise your children. <laughs> no, it doesn't. That's not what it means. It means that, you know, a village is, and like, this is what a lot of people fail to realize about a village. A village is made up of, it's a family. Right. You know, a village, you know, a village, when people live together, brother and sister and neighbor, they all are one family. Right. And it takes a family and a family of believers to raise a, a, a child, you know, so when you understand that, that's where you, that's where that love comes into play, loving your God, loving your brother, and becoming a villager, becoming a family member of the village, you know, in that village, you know, sometimes when, when you live in a village, and let's say your parents pass away, right, uh, someone else is going to take care, and you're going to take that position as a mother or father in your life, right, and like, for instance, and for instance, think about how it goes full circle, when that happens, you somehow will become a parent in someone else's life. Right. Think and, about and, how the tables turn. Yeah, and let me jump into that because, man, I always grew up, for those of my pe- people that are listening, you know, my brother, you know, my brother had a different mother. You know, she died in childbirth of him. And I always lived from a different perspective as living with both of my biological parents, but my brother had to live with the idea of having one biological parent and another parent who was learning to be his parent. Now, you know, I have two. I have two younger uh, uh, kids who are now my kids, and and you know, it, you know, and, it, and it's and that is also a learning process. So, so let me ask you this: to go back to original, and you don't have to speak names to be specific. Have you ever run into people in your extended family who didn't understand or accept you originally, and how did you navigate that? I'm often misunderstood and, and underappreciated in a lot of respect. But uh, it came, it, what it was was this. I also had to understand I played a part in that. Right. You know, um, sometimes what you want people to think about you, it's not easy for you to erase that image out of their mind. Right. You know, so when you go into any situation, and you got to remember, walk in the blessing. When you go into that relationship, clothe yourself the way how you want to be seen. You want to be seen regally and royally, clothe yourself royally. You know, it's because when you come to the table, it's not just going to be me. Well, you know, being you the way how you are at times, not saying you yourself, but that may not always be the person who you really want to be. Right. That's just the person that you are at the moment. And see, and at that time, you gave them a lasting impression. You know, and so now you're mad because they can't see past that. You know, well, you're the one that gave them that picture. You know, uh, you gave it to them. Like I said, if I label myself, let's say if I label myself as a, as a, a, a pimp, right? And as, as I use that for an example. Right. If I label myself as a pimp. Like a pimp. And then every time, exactly, <laughs> and every time I turned around, they call me a pimp. Right. Right. You know, and I get mad because that's not the lifestyle that I want to live anymore, or that's not the life that I, you know, who started that? I did. Right. I projected myself as a pimp. Right. You know, or let's say if I, I projected myself as a, as a, as a fool, right? And if I, and, and now I want to be taken serious. Well, I'm the one that gave them the impression of the fool. Right. You know, who's at fault? You know, there's an old cliche, I can't change what you think. But I can, I can definitely change the way I present myself or what I present that will control you to some degree the level of your thought process. Right. So it's a matter of taking.
taken responsibility for your own actions. Right. You know, like, for instance, if you go through and, and let's say with insecurities, a lot of times we make excuses for the things that are inconsistent in our lives. Like, for instance, let's say if we were financially challenged and we say, I don't think about money. I, money don't mean nothing to me. I, and, and in reality, the people that could have helped you, if you say, hey, man, you know, I love things like the next person, but I'm having a rough month this month. You never know who's in the pipeline that can help you or would like to help you. Right. But the difference is, once you've made the impression that, oh, I don't really care, they, they, they automatically think about what you presented to them. So from that respect, you've hurt yourself uh, tremendously. Right. So I tell people all the time, try to make the impression that you wish to keep. And, and you know the whole expression, fake it till you make it? Sometimes you have to. Right. I mean, like, for instance, you have to sometimes put the best foot forward. Think about it like this. Even in your relationship with God, you know what I mean? Like, um, and you, you, you may not be, you got to remember, you're a sinner. I don't care what you are. You're a sinner. I mean, you could have been in church all day or whatever place you go all day long. When you got back from wherever you were, you're still a sinner. Right. You know what I mean? In, in a certain respect. But by the same token, you're free. You know, you're free from it because you know uh, you, you, you're you free from that whole aspect of it because you're putting forward, you're putting forward the, the new you. And like, for instance, when, when Jesus and I go to prepare a place for you, it's a mental thing also. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm putting myself in your place. You can be my righteousness. You can use my righteousness for you. Right. So now you can be seen as right. Clothe yourself in me. So when you go into the relationship and you say, well, look, I may not be all of the things that I wish I was. However, I'm going to clothe myself in Jesus, and I'm going to go there, and I'm going to be presented in the way under Jesus' name. That's it. People say, well, you're fronting. No, I'm not fronting. I'm thinking it till I make it. I think about I know what I want to be. So at this particular point, I'm going to go be that person. I'm not going to be who I'm not. I, I don't plan to be like this. So I'm not going to them with this clothes on. I'm not, I don't want to get kicked out of the wedding banquet. <laughs> I like that. That's gangster. That's gangster. Yeah, and, and people say that's and, and that's that's the realest thing. I mean, you got to think about it. Jesus had the ability to make life very good for people right here on earth. I want you to think about it like this: the people he walked around, he was healing. But what did he preach? The kingdom of heaven is me. That's heavy. L- 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 he said, yo, I'm Jesus. I'm going to make this job right for you now. That's heavy. L- the l- kingdom of heaven is me. Let me ask you a question. How, in your opinion, how were, how was, and, you know, back to, to, to religion versus relationship, from your perspective, how were people able to reconcile being religious, but at the same time, they were comfortable in calling for Jesus's death, you know, and, and that can also be kind of, kind of, uh, compared to even people today, you know, you know, my respect for Islam, but I totally denounce and have no, you know, I totally denounce those who kill people in the name of God. So how are, how are these people religious, quote unquote, but still comfortable with persecuting, uh, killing, pursuing, and killing Jesus, and then ultimately, almost all of the disciples, they killed them too. So how how are, how are people able to be religious, but yet still able to do these horrible things in your, in your estimate? Well, now, this question might get a lot of people stirred up, or the answer to this question may get a lot of people stirred up, but I have to answer in honesty. Let me ask you this question. Did you ever look at the Last Supper scenario and what Jesus said to Judas and the rest of the disciples. Talk to me about it. Judas was sitting at the table with the rest of the disciples, and Jesus said, he said, uh, you know, he began to talk to them about, you know, things. And he told them, he said, listen, he said, of, of all of you that are here, I chose every one of you, did I not? Yeah. He said, he said and yet one of you is going to betray me, Right. And people say, oh, no, I would never, whatever. And Peter jumps up and says, no, I would never betray you, blah, 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 blah. And Jesus said to him to Peter, before the night is, before the cock can crow, you're going to deny me three times. Right. He knew intimate details. He also knew who was going to betray him. Okay? And when the time came, he said to G- Judas, do what it is that you have to do. Right. Right? 
And so what happened, Judas had an opportunity to say, oh, God, no, I can't do this. I can't, right? But what happens is, see, some things have to happen. Now, if Jesus were to die an old man, could, would, could, would he have had the impact that he had on, on us today? Right. You know, he, he, his murder, he had to take death by the reins. You know what I mean? So he, didn't, he wasn't going to die in peace. He was going to die in, a, in an aggravated assault kind of way. Right. Right. In order to take away the sins of the world. Right. And, yeah, and, 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 and Jesus went on to pasture with the Lord. It couldn't be that way. Right. And just it to, had to be this way. And just to jump in with you, man, I, I like the way that you put that because I think people don't look at it in that way. But you're right. I mean, the way that he was treated, I mean, it, it, it was literally aggravated assault. I mean, these people, you know, I mean, what was done to him was just so heavy. Now, I'm going to show you something even deeper. we take that same scenario. Peter jacked up because Jesus told him he was going to deny him three times. I want you to think about it like this. When the people came to arrest Jesus, right, Peter pulled his sword out and cut the man's ear off. And I'm going to show you two different things. Right. First of which, the people who were coming to get Jesus, Peter, because he was so emotional about God, he immediately pulled out his sword. Like, I'm... I'm, I'm well, it, let me, let, me, let me reject that and go back to that. Because he was so emotional in his relationship with Jesus, okay, that he pulled his sword out, right? And he pulled his sword, he cut the man's ear off. Jesus, at that point in time, did something very unique. What did he do? He healed the guy. Why? Y'all trying to kill me. T- tell me. Think about it. Because, first of all, Vengeance didn't belong to him. Right. It belongs to God. Right. Right. That's number one. Number two, that wasn't the 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 effect of the death was not about the effect of them capturing Jesus and persecuting him was not was not to rile up Christians. Now I want you to understand something. Like for instance, in Islam, you know, is 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 a religion of peace. And a lot of people don't take the names to understand. You know, uh, Islam to understand it's about peace. Right. Okay. There is no Islamic. There is no Islamic realness to murder. Okay. Right. And and and, and, and even though the infidel and all the different things there, you know, I I understand and you know I do. I've been there too. You know what I mean? But my thing is this: there is no. It, it totally goes against the principle of love. Right. Hate was never given to us. Love was given to us. Right? We're supposed to be peaceful and loving, forgiving. You know what I mean? So in that particular sense, Jesus showed forbearance right then and there. I forgive you for what you're about to do. Right. And he healed the guy that was about to take him to his death. That's heavy, isn't it? Okay. So when you think about it, we, when the Christians roll up and say, we're going to stop these Muslims from killing people. Listen, who are you and where did you come from? You did not come from Jesus. That's heavy. Because Jesus healed the man that tried, was coming to kill him. And he prayed for the ones that weren't killing him. Right. Now, let me show you the cross, cross grain. Jesus People look at says, man, these people put Jesus to death. They forget one simple thing. Here's an example. Here's a simple staple. When they went to Pontius Pilate, Pontius Pilate had the opportunity. He said, because he didn't want to pull a string on Jesus. He, he didn't. Want to do it. No, why y'all got me doing this? You're right. Right? He says, I'll tell you what. Listen, uh, today, because of the Sabbath, let me tell you what's going to happen. Y'all got a chance right now to let somebody free. Now, all of these people that follow Jesus, all of these people that were healed by Jesus, all of these people that received these miracles, listen, he said, yo, who do y'all want to save? Jesus of Nazareth or, uh, or, 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 or the other guy, Barabbas, the murderer? He said, set Barabbas free, kill Jesus. Right. Isn't it, that deep? It is deep. It is deep. And even to beg back... To, to go back to your point about him healing the person that captured him, he looked, he was on the cross and he said to, to God, he said, forgive them because they know, know not what they do. 
And that, I mean, could you imagine that? Could you imagine these people who 